following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the March 15th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We do not make that one little two by four shift it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today for you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I. It's just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday, of course. This is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got all U.S. indices trading to the upside. Uh, anywhere from, let's see, the smallest percentage is the Russell. That's up six tenths. And the largest percentage move, semiconductors, three and a quarter percent. They're up uh, 98 points, 100 points. Russell is up. Uh, 12 points. The Dow is up 429. That's one to three tenths. And the S&P is up one and a half percent or 62 points. Gold is off 31 bucks. She's trading out 1920, 90. 1920 is a key support level. You've got uh, silver off 13 pennies. That's also trading, testing support. Top of its uh, daily, uh, bottom of its daily, top of its weekly profiles out there. We can take a look at that. Lights recruit is off five bucks and change. Trade out at 97.58. That's also trading into a level of support. Lead the charge dollar wise. The upside, you got Amazon up 85 bucks, 3%. Booking holding 77, 4%. Google 48, 2%. Chipotle 39, that's two and six tenths percent. And Mercado Libre 37 bucks, that's a little over 4%. To the downside, Coupa Software off 18 bucks or 20%. Ferguson PLC 7%, 11 bucks. AI Pharmaceutical down 10 or 27 percent uh you've got the oih that's the oil services etf that's off uh, nine bucks that's a little over three percent chevron down eight bucks that's about five percent to the downside so let's begin here let's begin just kind of with the play-by-play -play short term time frame uh, chart out here we'll go to the 30 minute charts and take a look for the equity futures that is now we'll, we'll step back and we'll take a look at the larger time frames but first let's start with i think it's a screen here i hope it is um, yeah, I think I got the right screen. Those are the 30 minute charts that you each should be looking at. So there, I want to point out a couple of things here. The first is that the ES, the NQ, and the Adao each formed TD9 count tops that lasted for not even a half hour. And what that tells us for those time frames, that tells us about a strong momentum move to the upside. So that did not stop price. It did so in the case of the Russell 2000. You can see its TD9 count top. This is the lower right-hand panel screen. The actual high forming on the bar following bar number nine. And then price pulling back to test support, which it did as we came out the air one o'clock, which was its red oscillator and change line. So as long as that holds, um, price should continue higher with its an eventual target. It's on a 30-minute basis at the 1996-60 level. In the case of the ES Mini, we can see that its oscillator and change line has changed color. Same thing, well, really, for, for uh, the ES, the NQ, and the YM. So that tells us about an eventual test of the oscillator and change line and price. A test and rejection after it has changed colors would be a bullish signal. 
Now, typically, we see price test that level after it's formed some kind of a top. But the TD9 count top is is has been negated, so that's not it. And that doesn't mean that price can't pull back that level or just move sideways while we have a rising price oscillator. But we should expect and see a test of that. And a test of rejection in the ES, like it's not a guarantee, but what it does is increase the odds that you see a move up to 42.9650. I'm not saying that's where price has to stop. I'm just saying that would become its next target. And right now, that is the target level. Other than you and I knowing that the oscillator and change line has changed color, and so a pullback or retracement here, don't let that get your skirt in a tizzy. With the NQ, and by the way, in the ES Mini, that level's at about 4208 right now. The NQ, it's about 13254. Its eventual target should be 13777. Now, just because I say that doesn't make it so, but that's the TD9 count breakdown level. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, its price target is, hmm, so its price target, all I've got right now is getting back to the highs from about 6.30 morning on the 11th, and that would be at about the 33.588 level. So that's what's going on when we take a look at the short-term time frames. If we take a look at the larger time frames out here, change these windows, we'll just go to the daily chart. If you give me a moment to do that. Now we've got the daily time frame, and you've got the ES Mini in the upper left. Now, here's a set of profiles. These set of profiles out here are slightly different. I believe they're slightly different than the ones on my black background chart. For example, here this shows support at 4170. The black background chart showed at 4185.75. Which one is correct? They're both correct. They're both using the same calculations. For some reason, they often, not oftentimes, but sometimes they come up with different levels. So, okay, so they come up with different levels. We use that information. So here... Uh, you have a TD9 count bottom that is held. You have a Rogeman Dim Indicator bottom that's held. This is the ES Mini. And price, in essence, is consolidating with inside its daily profile. Now, its real resistance area, or its next resistance area, because price is above the top of its, or above its red oscillator and change line, and a close above that would then suggest to move to 4323. I've got 4296, if you might recall, on the 30 minute time frame chart. So that becomes your range to the upside. A close above 4323, that's going to present a target of 4438. 4381 happens to be the top of the daily profile on my black background chart. So that becomes your range. And then, of course, you've got the TD9 count breakdown level. That's at 4514. In the case of the NQ, uh, it still has its TD9 count bottom. It's confirming a Rogemintum indicator bottom, or it appears to be. Uh, and it will if we get a bullish reversal candle at day's end. What we're also looking for here, or what you'd be looking for, if there's going to be a further rally in NQ, is for price to close above where it's trading right now, which is right into its oscillator and change line on a daily basis, which is 13,319. We're at 13,325. If price can close above that level, we gave you a price projection target of 13,777. You've also got 13,901. 13,901 is the bottom of its uh, profile on my white background charts. That is not what we have on the black background charts, but that becomes a level of resistance. And above that, you'd be looking at 14,479. Speed this up a little bit. In the case of the Dow, still has its TD9 count, Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom, prices above the oscillator and change line. I didn't give you, I really didn't have much of a target for you on the uh, 30 minute chart, but here we can see this is a bearish structured profile, different on the white background charts than the black ones, but here we got see real resistance in the range of 33804 to 34091. In the case of Russell 2000, it's the only one trading, well, the NQ is trading below its oscillator and change line. Uh, look, it still has its bottoming signals, and it has just simply been consolidating with inside its Ninja Trader, the white background. Market profiles, that's between 1934 and 2057. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll go to some questions that have come in by email. Of course, I'd love to hear from you as well at 877 927 6648. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. 
and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE, and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our first question. This one coming in from uh, Mike. This is uh, Mike from New Hampshire. It says, hey, Steve, I did well on my drip trade. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Now, when do we go long crude oil? Perhaps via USO. Please review support levels for crude oil from your toolbox. So uh, the chart that we've got up on the screen right now, Mike, is our four panel. Uh, this is my uh, synthetic version of the contract for light speed crude and just looking for some support levels. One of the things that you asked about. Now, if we take a look in the upper left-hand corner, that's the daily time frame. And price is trading just below the bottom of its daily profile. The bottom of that profile is at 98.04 or at 97.10. But you can also see a series of rising trend lines. So price is trading into a level of support. The weekly chart here shows that price is back below the top of its weekly profile. What this chart does not show you is the weekly oscillator and change line. And what I can share with you, and I'll show you that screen here in a few minutes, We'll switch over, but that's priced at 96.61. So that level is held. You know, you can't see that line here. So that's a key level of support that is on the weekly time frame. And, and my point here is that price is back to a key area of support. And that's what we want to know because we're going to go take a look at the short term time frames, see if you and I can ferret out any additional information. Because the monthly time frame price is above the top of the profile out here. Uh, the month is not over, so I don't want to speculate what candle may or may not form out here. But everything for the monthly time frame is bullish, price above its oscillator and change line, so on and so forth. So now let's go. So your question is when is the time to go long light speed crude? So we have established that price is back at support areas. Let's go ahead and change the uh, screens here. It will go to our nine panel or eight panel screen. That would be interesting if I could get a nine panel screen out here. But we're going to go to the eight panel screen. And here, so here, if you look at that weekly time frame, Mike, you can see that green oscillator and change line price is sitting at support. 
on a 30 minute time frame. So I'm just searching around here. We have bottom signals for the 30 minute, the 60 minute, 120 minute, the 240, oh, and the three hour and the five hour time frame chart. So every single intraday time frame supports that we should see a bottom or at least as some type of uh, bounce that forms here. However, and here's the caveat, right? We can take a look at that 30 minute chart. So we go to the shortest time frame. On the shortest time frame, what we're going to see here, I'll just expand this back. We see a nice TD9 count bottom. We see a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. The two bottoms make a difference? No, but it's, you know, and it's a bottom. And it's just been confirmed out here. But each of those are this bottom, the most recent bottom, the one that formed uh, earlier this, uh, this morning out here. The exact time frame when that confirmed was not until 12 noon. And what price did here, Mike, is it got right up to its first level of counter trend resistance. In other words, yeah, we've got an established bottom, or it's trying to establish a bottom, and support is held. But right now, if this really is a bottom, price should take out the first key level of resistance, which would be its TD9 count breakdown level. And in fact, that's at 9808. We can see that what's happened so far is price got up to that level and it's made a, a detour, it's made a U turn. Now, it may be building cause as Tom likes to say, to try to bust that out. I don't know that. It is still above the top of its profile for this time frame, so it's not bearish. It just got up to a resistance level. So, Mike, I think the first answer to your question, to the extent that you want to take a long trade, is you would want to see two consecutive bars close above 9808. That would then at least support the signal that the short-term counter-trend move has failed, and that price would then make its next move to its next breakdown area, and that would be at 102.36. So that's the first place that I would be paying attention to. If price is able to close above that level, then we go take a look at, for example, a 60-minute time frame chart, which I'll back uh, uh, or I'll uh, expand out here. You can see this has a TD9 count, and no, I take that back. This only has a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom, and its level of resistance is 98.78. So that's a level you'd like to see taken out to support a uh, bottom. So that's an area that you'd also see a like to see a failure. There's a TD9 count bottom on the 120 minute time frame chart. Its resistance level is what it's dealing with right now, which is the top of a profile at 98.35. So close above that would then signal move to 103.22. In the case of the 240 minute chart, it has to get up above its red oscillator and change line at 99.67, but it's got a nice bottom. It should be able to do that. And a TD9 count bottom on the five hour time frame chart with 102 even steven right now being its resistance levels. So Let's summarize this. We know that light speed crude is pulled back to some rising trend lines on the daily time frame. It's a green oscillator and change line on the weekly time frame. Uh, the uh, intraday charts have bottoming signals. You need to see 9808 fail, then 9878 fail. And that ought to take you up to the 103, then 109 uh, type areas out there. Uh, so I hope that that helps you out, Mike, with regard to uh, what you're going to uh, do out there. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. The next question coming in from Michael. This is Michael from Virginia. Michael says, Steve, can you please review AMD? We can. I believe I'm still on the Lightspeed Crew charts, am I? I am. So now let's go switch that up and let's go to our eight panel, uh, top and bottom multi time frame scan tool. How about that? I just kind of made that up. Uh, but uh, and you're allowed to do that when you have the mic. But here it is. So this is our eight panel set of charts out here. Here is AMD. And your questions are, is a TD9 bottom in place? And what levels should you monitor? So I believe you're talking about, I would think you're talking about the daily time frame. Uh, although I'll, I'll start with the daily time frame and then we'll go from there. Your specific question, is there a TD9 count bottom? And the answer there is yes. And that formed all the way back here on January 28th. That low is 99.35. Not until price closes below that low would you negate that pattern. Now, that pattern led to a TD9 count top that formed out here on the trading day of February 9th. That led to price pulling back and testing that TD9 count, that January 28th low. Uh, inside of AMD, I'm going to just switch over to my other black background charts. Uh, I'm going to punch that up. I'm just curious as to whether that was a test on lighter volume of that swing point. That was a swing point I was referring to as January 28th. The volume there was 98 million shares, and it was tested um, – with 135, that's not what you want to see. But uh, well, it's, uh, still doesn't does it matter? Yeah, it matters. Um, but look, you've got a TD9 count, and now, depending on how the day finishes here, Mike, you could have a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom because these last three candles create that morning star. So 
how would you trade this? If you're looking to take a long position and price it back inside the profile, above its oscillator and change line, your next battle is going to be at 111.01. I'm not saying it's going to lose that battle. I'm just telling you that's where the battle is at. And then above that, you have a battle at 119.76. And then above that, you're in the 136.39 zone. But to answer your specific question, does this have a TD9 count bottom? Yes, it looks like today we'll confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. So let's look at the other time frames for AMD and see what they tell us. Well, you've got a TD9 count bottom on the weekly time frame. That formed the week of January 28th. As long as that low holds, that should get us up to 123.40. I don't have a topping pattern, per se, in the a monthly time frame chart, just price pulling back to support, and support being its bullish structured profile between 96.06 and 104.61. So that's a support area. Intraday-wise, on the 195-minute chart, you've got a TD9 count bottom. You've got a, what do you have? A TD9 count bottom on the 130, on the 160, on the 65. You don't have diddly on the 30 minute chart out here, but you do have a TD9 count top that is forming as we speak. So this could set up. So let's just say, Mike, that you want to take a long trade. Knowing that the 30 minute chart has a TD9 count top and the oscillator and change on its change colors, the level you want to monitor, let price pull back and test that oscillator and change line. Now it's currently printed 106.13. I don't know that's where the test is going to take place, but you'd like to see a test and rejection of that line. And then that could trigger you into a long position for AMD. That's at 106. Maybe you don't want to wait for that $2 or so. And you go ahead. But you can't enter now with a TD9 count on the 30. Great. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFN and hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. You got the Dow up uh, 341 points right now, and the uh, on the screen, you've got the uh, ticker symbol ARKK, one of Kathy Woods' uh, ARK ETFs out there. You know, I went through each of her ETFs. Uh, this is for Coda inside the Tiger's Den. Coda, it's amazing how many of the same instruments are in her different, uh, about six or seven different ETFs that she's got out there. Kind of interesting. But your specific question was, do we have a, a TD9 count uh, signal inside of ARKK? And the answer is we do. Today is going to become bar number nine of that um, of that pattern. Now remember, the low of this pattern can form a bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. What you also see out here, Coda, is that uh, this has a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that's still triggered. And ideally, what you'd be looking for there is a bullish reversal candle to confirm that. The other thing that you want to see um, is you'd like to see price above the red oscillator and change line. Remember, red oscillator and change line, the fact that it's red tells us we have a falling price oscillator. The fact that price is below the red line tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. And that is a, a bearish a signal. Now, you've got the bottom pattern out there. Uh, but I would uh, I'd wait on this one. Now, your battleground, should you take a long position in ARKK? First, you've got 55.47. That's the oscillator and change line. Then you've got 61.08. Counter trend rallies would end at 64.66. I don't know whether this would be a counter trend rally if price would get up there or not. But if it does, that's the level that you really want to be paying attention to. If price can clear that, then you're looking for a battle at 70.02 and then 76.24. But to answer your question, is there a TD9 count bottom inside of ARKK? The answer is absolutely good spotting on your part. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. Now, we were talking about AMD earlier, which is a part of the uh, semiconductors out there. And uh, so I'm going to go back to uh, that here. I know you've got the man running across the screen, so or the woman running across the screen. So just give me a moment here to get back to that set of charts out here. And uh, as this will populate, and you're welcome, Coda. Uh, here, these are the uh, top eight holdings inside the semiconductor index. The semiconductor index um, is attempting to form a bottom. Let me pull over the daily time frame chart here. I'll just pull this over. And so here's our daily time frame chart. Now, the daily time frame chart, let me back this up just a tad. We're going to see that Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. And so it needs a bullish reversal candle and a close above that oscillator and change line. So I believe this was one of the mics that was asking. So in the case of AMD, what you'd like to see is you'd like to see the entire sector give you a buy signal as well. So what you're really looking for here, I'm looking at the SOX. I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the SMHs, but that's fine. So in the case of the SOX out here, you really want to see a close above 3157 is what we'll call it. If you do that, then you're going to get your bullish reversal candle. You're going to be above your red oscillator and change line. Now, of course, if the semis give you a buy signal, we want to understand what's going on under the covers. Well, what's going on under the covers is understanding its weightings. And these top eight instruments here, Taiwan Semiconductor, NVIDIA, AMD, which we were looking at, and so forth, represent, I believe, about 55% of the uh, ETF itself. Well, in the case of Taiwan Semiconductor, it has a TD9 count bottom that's in place. And today it's attempting to form a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. So the key here for TSM is a close above 102.31. That's its red oscillator and change line. That would signal that it has turned or should have turned. And at least it's going to make a move to 107.36 to 111.11 or to 113. Those become your battleground levels. In the case of NVIDIA, it already has a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal looking like it's going to go ahead and confirm a second one today with today's bull sash candle and a close above the center of its profile. The center of the profile is right around where it's trading right now. It's actually at 227.81. A close above 227.81 says I want to make a move to 259.35. We've already covered AMD. Uh, AVGO, we don't have any kind of signal here, just a sideways move. So not an influencer. Intel has a TD9 count bottom. If it did generate a bullish reversal candle, it could form a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. Its resistance level or battleground is between 4574 and 4655. But it's got potential there. Wave number seven on TXN, Texas Instruments out there. Uh, so it's got a bottom that's in place. It's got a new profile that's formed. Its next level of resistance is 174.13. Qualcomm does not have any kind of a bottom signal here. So it's a Debbie Downer inside of the semiconductor index. Uh, Micron, MU, is forming bar number nine as we speak. Probably an A to B equals CD to the downside out here. Yes. 
Express, and today's bull sash candle would confirm that. This tells you about a battle at 75.94, then 78.09-ish, 79.97, and 81.99. But you do have a bottom signal here. So the uh, the of the top eight instruments, I represent 55%. We've got one confirmed bottom, two confirmed bottoms, three confirmed bottoms, four confirmed four, So five of the eight have confirmed bottoming signals there. Now, we don't have to stop right there. We can take a look at the other instruments. So let's go do that here. Stevie kind of getting efficient here at changing these screens. Either say strategic delay. Uh, that's just simply, oh, man. Well, that's interesting. I think this is it. Uh, somebody just in the den, if you're listening, is ASML the one that's up on the upper left-hand side? Yeah, okay, I see it now. It is. So now you're looking at the other eight instruments out here. Now, there's more than 16 instruments that make this out. Thanks, Coda. But here, if we're looking for additional signals inside the semiconductor index, ASML has a confirmed Rhodesman to indicator bottom. Uh, you're confirming an ADI, you're confirming Rhodes Mintum Indicator Bottom today. You'd like to see it close above that red oscillator and change line. Uh, currently, that is printing at about 149.78. Um, AMAT, I don't have a bottom signal. Bottom pattern in LAM Research, you got a TD9 count bottom that formed yesterday. Price should go target 490.20 and above that 497.47, above that 543. Uh, NXPI has a confirmed Rhodes Mintum Indicator Bottom. That was a key reversal session that uh, formed out here on the trading day of March the 8th. You've got a TD9 count bottom in CLAC, KLAC, 10 core out there. So there is a bottom. Marvell has a bottom pattern out here uh, with its, uh, it needs to clear, it needs to close above 65.97. That would be the uh, counter trend move, but you've got the valid bottom there. And you're going to get a bottom signal inside a ticker symbol SNPS. So many of the instruments inside the semiconductor space here are giving us bottom signals out there. And that may be an area that you want to uh, focus in on. Again, in the case of the semiconductor index, you'd like to see it close today about 31.57.40 to give you that all clear clear signal out there. So I hope that helps you out. Um, there's a question about AVEO. So to do that, I need to change screens here. If you give me just a moment, we'll get back to the right screen. It will pull that up on our panel. Uh, let me do that on this chart here. AVEO. And uh, let me just get this on our three time frame. It should be the black screens, I believe, that are up on our AVEO up on your screen right now. Just kind of check into that. Uh, yeah, it is. Okay. So what you like about this, Dan? Well, first, the battleground. Where is the real battleground? You can see it's the top of the bearish structured weekly profile. That's at 523. You've gotten up to a high of 560, but price is back below that area. So that's really your stiff area of resistance. Look, price has taken out a descending trend line on the daily time frame, so that looks pretty nice. You're back inside a bullish structured on the uh, monthly time frame. So it's really about being able to close above 523. That would be your all clear sign. Now let's pull over the white background charts or maybe other information that you and I need to be aware of. As we open this up on the daily time frame, we can see that price is taking on its TD9 count breakdown level, and that's at 510. So even though closing above that would be nice, you can see 568. Geez, that was another TD9 count. And each of these TD9 count breakdown areas, these are where the sellers are lurking, or at least where price had broken down before. Uh, but does it look good? Does it look good on the daily time frame? Clearly, there's an A to B equals CD to the downside that was confirmed on January 28th out there. I'm not sure if it was a test and rejection on lighter volume. But nonetheless, with regard to ABEO, you're looking for this to close above the top of its bearish structured weekly profile. That's five dollars and twenty three cents. Right. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, let's uh, let me make sure I'm on the right screen here. I am not, uh, so let me get that taken care of. And uh, we're going to go to our first uh, question by email, and that is going to be from uh, – well, maybe it's not the first question, but we're going to go to that question anyways. This is from L.B. Lee. Wants to take a look at URA, that is uh, the Global – X funds for uranium ETF out here. And the question goes like this. Could you please look at URA and do your analysis on them? Yep, so far it looks like a pretty strong reversal today along with the rest of the markets. Do you see this as a bottom? Lee, here's what I see out here. Um, let me get rid of a, let me just turn a couple of things. Whoops, that's weird. Come on, work with me. Let me just uh, turn a couple of things off and then we'll turn them back on. Because what I see out here is a sell the D point. Uh, so I'm just going to turn off the uh, trend lines, get rid of those. Okay, so you can see the A to B equals CD. This makes a 1 to about a 1.618 A to B equals CD to the upside. And yesterday was a gap to the downside. That was your bearish reversal candle there. So you've got to confirm sell the D point. Lee, what price has done is it's pulled right back to support. So let me get rid of that pattern. And support is the bottom of its daily profile. And that's at the 2306 area. On a weekly basis, with regard to URA, uh, what do we see out here? In fact, let me just do this. So, so, you've, so your question was, do you see this as a bottom? I answer it this way. I see a top. You now see the top. Price is pulled back to support. And so is that a bottom? It can be a bottom. Pulling back to support can be a bottom for its next move. Now, we can also see that on the trading day of February 28th, this gapped up with about 5 million shares. Today, you're pulling back into that area with 2.2 uh, million shares. So that's the kind of light volume that you like to see out here. You can also see, though, that you are consolidating, in essence, with inside the weekly profile. So your resistance level here is at 2560. So you just want to be able to note that. As I pull over the white background charts here for URA, what else do we see? This is the weekly chart. I don't see anything much there to add to our discussion. Nothing here on the daily. And on the monthly time frame, um, not much to really add here. It's bullish. So if you have been in it and you got out, or you're looking at So with regard to a bottom, not like a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, not like a uh, TD9 count, not like wave number seven, but yes, 
pulling back to support out there. And I think that's what your question was, Lee, and I believe we've answered that. So thanks so much for writing in, and uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you again. Kelly B. writes in, and Kelly says, would you please look at VXX versus UBXY versus VXX? It's really acting strange. So the VXX, here's what I don't know, Kelly. And you, you really have to look this up. I can't really do this during the show. I wish I had a set of tools that made it really easy to do that, which is I don't know what's inside of VXX. Uh, inside of VX, well, what's first of all, let me get to a screen. Okay, I'm on the black background screen. Let me get to the VIX screens out here. So um, what we would be potentially taking a look at is, well, it's certainly not the March VIX contract. So I don't know what is inside there. You say it's acting strange, but the question is, um, what is what are the holdings with inside of VXX? So I, I don't know the answer to that. It could be a couple of different futures contracts. Um, it is an ETF, so it should be. Uh, but I, I don't know the answer. You haven't seen this before. You're, something's really strange. So what's really strange? Let me go back to the three time frames here. Let me just type a VXX. And because uh, you, you say something is strange, but I don't know what that strange is. So here's VXX, uh, UVXY. Again, each of these may contain different um, different components. And that's really where you've got to start. And, and I just can't do that during the show here. But uh, Kelly, that, that's where I would start if I were you, is really understanding what is inside of VXX and go from there. If with regard to where is the VIX going, if that's a question, um, you know, this one is a bit hard to to say at this stage. I'm going to pull up the VIX products again, the VIX symbols out here. New issuance halted. VXX is a new issuance? Hmm. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Um, but again, I still don't know what's inside there, you know, and uh, so I don't know what's going on. As we take a look at the VIX here, let's assume that the, um, the, the market is bottomed. I mean, we've got bottom signals, right, for the ES, the NQ, the IW, the Russell 2000, and the uh, and the Dow out there. So if that's the case, what you should see is you should see the spot volatility at least pull back. The pullback level would be the 50-day expense moving average. That would be a 27.16. So that's a real possibility out there. Um, I don't know what else I can add to that conversation, uh, Kelly. Uh, during the next break, I'll try to find out some information, but don't know that I really have enough time to be able to do that. So this is one of those questions where I probably can't help you out. I can tell you that trading the VIX is a is a complicated um, is a complicated uh, trade, just simply because of what you've got to manage out there. Uh, so the VXX is so. Our, our favorite polar bear writes in, Barclays has halted new shares creations of IPATH Pure Beta Crude Oil, ETN. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, VXX, Monday morning, becoming the latest exchange traded products to close its doors to new cash in recent weeks. Okay, well, so there's there's a lot of strange stuff going on there. Let's just go to our next question. This one coming in from Rich. And Rich wants to take a look at uh, Moderna, MRNA. So we're definitely going to do that. Let's get this on our uh, fired up on our three panel screen out here. And the question is, it seems to be acting pretty well. Do you think this is a good place to add? If you have time, you're long GFI. What's your analysis on gold GFI? So with regard to Moderna, you're just consolidating right now, Rich, with inside its daily profile. Your range there, or resistance, I should say, is 154.40, support at 136.55. Weekly shows you resistance, which is the bottom of its weekly profile, 156.48. You may notice only two lines. That's because the center and the bottom are the same levels, 156.48. So that becomes your real significant resistance level. So he's maybe acting well, but so far it's lost the battle of resistance and then you've got resistance on the bottom of the monthly profile at 155.36 so really 156.48 with regard to moderna is the key level that it needs to close above let's look at the white background chart see if there's some other signals here that rich and i can pick up on for you and as we look at it we do have a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom that took place yesterday with that bull sash candle so you're consolidated with inside the daily profile. You've got a bottoming signal. The better buy area would be between 130.12 and 136.55. That's what the daily chart suggests. 
The weekly chart says uh, what? Says you still have a TD9 count bottom that is held. So that's a beautiful thing. If price can close above the bottom of that uh, weekly profile, you should see it move to 174.63 and then the top, 193.11. The monthly time frame chart out here doesn't look good. The monthly chart says Moderna could easily pull back to 13.53 over time out there. So does it look good? Um, it's got. I, I just shared with you everything that I can with regard to uh, Moderna out there, and um, so I hope that that helps you out, Rich. If there's something else that you need, uh, please let me know. By the way, there was a quick question inside the Tigers Den from Coda about the QQQs. He was wondering if there's a TD nine count bottom. And the answer is there is. That happened way back on February 28th. You're going to get another one today. It appears TD nine count bottom as well as a road momentum indicator signal. But Coda, here's the deal. See how this red oscillator and change line continues to act as resistance? That's really where you want to see price close above. That's 324.88. Steve Rhodes with TFN, and we get back to this breakout here. We've got uh, two more questions. One about Rivian from Michael P. and uh, Freeport McMoran. We'll take a look at those to close out the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So Mike in Pennington, New Jersey, wants to know, how long, how low can Rivian, R-I-V-N, go, or do you see it bounce? Thank you. 
So, Mike, uh, today uh, the answer to that question will come from the stock charts and may come tomorrow. You are in the bar following bar number nine of a TD nine count. So that says that today's low, this is the low of the session of the three candles, eight, nine or ten. If you see a close below today's low, then the answer is it's going to go lower. You should see a bounce. Now, you could even get a bullish reversal candle today that would confirm a rose momentum indicator signal. Now, the bounce, the first bounce, Michael, would only take you to 39.61 or thereabouts. That's the red oscillator and change line. If it can clear that level, then your battles are at 42.69, 51.18, 59.14, 59.14, 62.49. So you can take this one step at a time. If you want to take a trade on this, your stop is a close below today's low, whatever that is. Uh, but you've got, uh, you know, potentially limited upside at the stage here, or you at least have battleground in front of you, 3962, 4269. So I hope that helps you out. And yeah, I think you spotted the, uh, the potential bounce slash bottom area. We take a look at Rivian. The last one we're going to look at is Freeport McMoran. The question coming in on this for Freeport McMoran is from, uh, oh, geez, and there's four more questions that have snuck in all because of the uh, ISP issues out there. Uh, sorry, folks, you just got to get them off earlier if you can. And maybe it did. It just takes time for the ISP to get them to me. But Rich in Oregon wants to take a look at FCX. What would you need to see in the charts to signal buy for FCX? And what's, what possible entry points? Well, uh, Freeport McMoran is in bar number seven today. You've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. So you've got two patterns that haven't completed. I'd look for those patterns to complete out here. The A to B equals CD could take you down towards the 38.98 level. You're in bar number seven. You could see a TD nine count bottom form between Wednesday and Friday of this week. Because you've got an A to B equals CD to the downside, you'd like to see that pattern confirm as well. So that's what I would be looking for there, Rich in Oregon. So thanks so much for writing in. Maybe thanks for writing back or writing to me, Mike, uh, M, and uh, Vic. I appreciate that. Sorry that I couldn't get to those messages, but uh, maybe we'll be able to do that tomorrow. Folks, stay tuned. David White's up next. Have a terrific Tuesday. We'll see you on wonderful Wednesday.